we have a very, very packed schedule for this afternoon. Um, we've got some great speakers for you and some great panels. Um, I hope you enjoyed lunch. I hope you got to ask lots of questions. Um, and I think you'll be asking even more questions uh, after this afternoon, which is a mixture of experience and inspiration. I think that's how I would summarize the speakers this afternoon. Um, so I'm now going to introduce our first keynote speaker. Um, and her keynote is called Vision, Inspiration and Longevity, What Be Being a European Capital of Culture Did for Us. So this is from Claire McColgan, who is head of Liverpool Culture Department in the European Capital of Culture. And Claire is going to present the Liverpool story from bidding through to now. In song. That's not my theme tune. <laughs> um, oh, here it goes again. I'm not going to salsa, no matter how times you play it. Right. Liverpool. Let's go back to Liverpool. I was born in Birkenhead, so Liverpool is very important to me. Liverpool is recognised as not only as a, an exemplar in cultural regeneration, but also a city that has created a true and lasting legacy from a major event transforming its fortunes and its place. And if any of you have gone back to Liverpool, I mean, I remember Liverpool as a child, and when I go back now, it has changed beyond any recognition, and I think that's uh, a large, large part because of culture and in a large, large part because of Claire. So, welcome to the stage. I definitely won't be doing anything through the medium of dance, so just don't, don't worry about that. Um, I'm Claire McCulloch and I'm Director of Culture in Liverpool and I'm going to take you, um, for all of you that are thinking about bidding in this competition, through our journey really to hope that you can get some, um, some, some ideas from it, but also I will talk about some of the issues that we had. Um, <laughs> we, we had quite a few, but also I think what, hopefully what you'll get from it is what the long-term gain is as well, because we had the most incredible year, you know, it's set a complete bar for European Capital of Culture, but I'm actually proud of the work that we've done since and the work that has made that beautiful city into, in, into something that, was, that probably wasn't quite that when, when, when we first started this process. So I'm going to take you through the process um, and I'm going to try and keep to time, but um, I can talk, so you're going to stop me aren't you, after five minutes. So I'm starting with that picture. It's what Liverpool is very famous for. Um, it's taken us, um, and it's part of its historical fabric, but it's also um, very interesting, and I'll refer back to it at the end, um, it's much more, it's, it's about, it's also it's about its contemporary future. For those of you who don't know the city, the city was the second city of the empire. Um, huge trading port, um, one of the busiest ports in the world. Huge, um, when you come to Liverpool, the majesty and the, of the architecture um, and the, the streets and the spaces and the kind of esplanades, if you like, really relate back to that, re really relate back to that time, a time when the city has huge amounts of wealth. But like many northern cities, Liverpool is probably, um, gone on the biggest kind of ups and downs, if you like, around regeneration than I think any other city actually in Europe. You know, it's had massive highs and huge, huge lows. And um, at one point along the way, it kind of forgot who it was. And that's, for me, it's still quite a shocking picture. It's 1980s, and that's the Albert Dock. For those of you that know, um, know Liverpool, it's now a very thriving, bustling heart of the city. But I know there's, some, there's someone sitting, who was sitting next to me there who, who was part of the whole housing. Um, development at that time, this is what the city had turned into. So in the 1980s, when the city was talked about as managed decline, you know, because they were the words that were used around this second port of the empire. Um, so managed decline, this is what it turned into. It turned into a city where all its, genera its younger generation left, um, and it was, it was in a very, very, very poor air, both, both emotionally, actually, and physically. And then, 30 years ago, a real brave move was made. It was made by Michael Heseltine. Michael Heseltine um, looked at Liverpool, looked at this great city, and thought that no city should ever become this. And he invested a huge amount of both his brain, his imagination, but also a lot of government money to look at how culture, you know, which, is, which was really, you know, if you think about Liverpool, Liverpool was at the heart of kind of the whole creative in the 60s. You know, it burst from that city to the rest of the world. For it to have lost its confidence and lost its way so badly is just, is just awful, actually. Um, he saw that, and um, he, along with the Tate, the Maritime Museum, and our seven national museums, um, became, became, came to the city. And the first kind of model, I think, of cultural regeneration started to take place. But it was a long journey, and we had a long way to go. 
when we started to bid for European Capital of Culture, there were 12 other, uh, other cities bidding. And we were at that point called the basket case of local authorities. <laughs> For those of you who are councillors or officers in the room, it's not a good thing. Um, it's not a creative term at all. It wasn't, it wasn't very good. You know, we were in special measures for basically everything. Um, and we had a whole new leadership, um, a very, very strong leadership, a very strong leader and a very strong chief executive who allegedly picked up this thing out of the bin that the European Commission had seen and said, look, let's just have a go at this. You know, let's have a go at this. It might, it might, it might work, it might not, but at least it gives us something to kind of focus on when everything else is kind of a basket case. So we decided to bid for European Capital of Culture. And again, you know, just to reiterate, this city, seven national museums, the Tate Gallery, a Liverpool Biennale by that point, you know, a huge storytelling, writers that came out of that city, musicians that came out of that city, thought the only thing that we could do was be shortlisted. So that's how low the confidence was. You know, it was actually about people who worked there coming in just, just, to be, just to be shortlisted. We bid about against 12 other cities, some of whom faces that I, that, I, that I see in the room now. And actually, it was a great process, because what it did is, while they were kind of sorting the city council out, we were developing probably the most creative process that I've ever been through. I love the bidding part. The bidding part is so the best bit. You know, it is so the best bit. You say yes to everything. You can dream your big dreams. You know, we got the whole city behind us to a point that, and that was the first time that had actually happened, really, that cities got completely behind a bidding process. It's done, it's done, it's done all the time now, and it's right to do that. But for us, you can dream in a bit, and then when you start delivering, you have to start saying no, which is slightly more tricky. But, um, but we had 12 cities, and what it did is it got all the city facing in the same direction. So all our disparate parts of it, from regeneration through to sport, through to people who are actually trying to physically regenerate the city, it meant we were all sitting around the table with a deadline, which was the capital of culture, which was the capital of culture bidding process. And we made it very clearly. We took a very brave step at that. At that it was considered a very brave step at that point. Remember, this is 13 years ago, and you're all, you know, everyone's moved on since then. But I came, I worked in Speak, Garston and the Dingle, which are three very, very poor areas of Liverpool. And I came into the bid to do the community programme. And our big thing and our big passion in that city was if we do nothing, if we don't even get past, you know, the, 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 the kind of shortlisting stage, we'll have changed the way that arts organisations work with communities. Because in Liverpool at that point in time, they jumped in and jumped out. We had lots of European money. So the arts organisations would jump in, do a lovely project and jump out again. And communities were very passive in that. And they kind of had to accept that. And what we wanted to do with the bidding process was completely turn that round so that communities were absolutely at the heart of decision making. They were absolutely at the heart of what they wanted their arts organisations that they pay for to do, not the other way around. Um, and that was a quite a big shift, if you can imagine, kind of 13 years ago with some, of, with, with some cultural organisations. Um, but it worked really well. We did projects that no one expected us to do. So we did projects that tested, I think, the judges at that point in terms of it wasn't a marketing campaign. You know, we did Liverpool at that point, you know, still is joked about around car crime. You know, it was an issue for us at that point in time. You know, let's be honest, you know, Liverpool was not, you know, the city that, that it is now. But we did projects with young people around car crime and took the judges out to see them. We tackled some of the really hardest issues in our city using the capital of culture bid process. And if I was to say anything to you, that gave that process so much meaning for us. You know, it wasn't just about getting all the media headlines that we got that we got along the way. It was actually about changing the way that culture can create a different conversation within a city, and it worked. Um, we were announced as the winning bid in 2003. We were definitely the second choice because no one actually was there from any of the media to see it. They had, uh, apparently, <laughs> ITV had to be turned round at three o'clock in the morning because the DCMS realised that no one was in Liverpool. Um, <laughs> because Newcastle were absolutely the favourites. Um, and we won, and we went from a very small bid team, really just thinking we didn't expect to win. You know, Liverpool had not had the best reputation in the national media at that particular point, as you'll all be aware. We're, our confidence was low, so when we won, it felt for the first time that the people of the city had won something for themselves. That was, and that is still a moment for me that still makes me fill up, actually, because... For a city that has been so, you know, battered for so long, to win something like a European Capital of Culture was just absolutely the turning point. And if you get into a taxi in Liverpool now, you go anywhere in Liverpool now, they mark that moment as their turning point. You know, taxi drivers, anyone, European Capital of Culture turned this city around. Brilliant. Um, but yeah, we didn't quite know what to do then. So. <laughs> so we won the bid and then we did what is usual in these things. You know, you fly lots of people in, you do lots of, you know, big headhunting head kind of opportunities and... 
lots of things went wrong for us on the journey and I won't go too much into those because actually they're part of the story and maybe we wouldn't, we wouldn't have had such a brilliant year if we hadn't have gone through the ups and downs. But I will say to you, especially for those of you who are politicians in the room, they are hard things to do. And I know I'm delighted when Janine said you don't need to do a whole year. You know, you could do things that are very focused and doing, you know, different, different places. They're a very hard thing to do because it's all about cultures, all about emotions, isn't it? You know, it's not about putting a road down. It's got lots of twists and twists and turns. using road analogy now. It's got lots of um, different ways of getting to a place. And that's quite hard. They're not easy things for cities to do. And then we launched. We launched in 2008, obviously. It was our European Capital of Culture year. We put Ringo Starr on the roof. And we had lots of new bands on the, on, on, on the um, plateau. And it was really odd. I stood there at half past six thinking no one was going to turn up. We'd had such a battering by our local media as well as national media le leading up to that. Um, I thought no one's coming. And then literally you turned around and there were 68,000 people outside St George's Hall. And it felt like the city's shoulders relaxed. It felt like, actually, this is going to be fantastic. And then we partied, really, for the whole year. I think Liverpool completely missed recession because we were too busy having a really, really great time. But not just in the city centre. You know, the way that the public, you know, our, the people who pay our council tax, council tax, really embrace capital culture was just incredible. It started us on a journey that, 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 that we've not looked back from, really. And so from that year, that brilliant year, you know, we move on. And... A big thing that we didn't do during the year, and I would absolutely say to any of you that are going to bid for this, is really think about legacy and what legacy means. And think about kind of how you want your city to be. Not in 2019 or 2020 when the first, when you, when you kind of win that prize, but actually the next 10 years. And use that as a starting point to jump off from, not the finish point to say, ta-da, here we are. And I think we really did that. I'm saying we really did it, but we didn't really have a plan as usual, you know, when, when, when we delivered, after we delivered European Capital of Culture. But our team, our team had learnt, you know, we'd learnt how to put on major events. We'd realised the importance of showcasing our city to an international and national audience. We changed that very parochial thing that can happen in places where it's just got to be about us. You know, we'd, we'd actually kind of really started to embrace the whole internationalism of what is truly international city. Oh, just said that really. Um, and the two things that we do, we've got engagement, trust and support of the communities in the city. When we did the bid, it was very, doing bidding is very, very brilliant, but it's also hard because everyone does want everything and everyone has a say and that, that's absolutely brilliant and fine. When you've actually, in some places, and you'll, lots of you will be from places like that, you've kind of got to prove it as well. You've got to kind of make a difference and you've got to prove that what you say you're doing, you've done. You know, places like Liverpool have been consulted to death by reams of consultants. You know, we had to deliver the most, the most incredible year. And now what's quite interesting, what the money that we spend on culture is not questioned. You know, we spend a lot of money on culture in Liverpool. You know, we think it's really important, but it's not questioned by the general public. They absolutely love it, and they turn out in their thousands for everything that we do. And we work, we carried on that kind of whole creative communities ethos. We have got a great cultural heritage. We had stuff to pull on, but we've also reinvented that cultural heritage as well. The Everyman, you know, Reba Award winning, but Sterling Prize Award winning building, you know, a huge, very, very strong, very concise cultural infrastructure. And then on top of that, which is really the bit that kind of I, I clicked with me during the whole process, is the community stuff. You've got to have that core of community stuff. You've got to kind of support your cultural sector. Then you've also got to have those big ideas that really, really kind of pierce through the kind of international psyche and kind of tell people where you are. When they did this in Southampton, there was about 20 people. They didn't have a very good day, in fairness, on the, um, on the waterfront when the three queens left. In Liverpool, a million people turned up. We did a whole cultural programme around it. It was three ships coming down a river. But the atmosphere, you know, and that kind of sense of getting, coming together around an absolute collegiate moment of conversation is just exactly what it's all about. When we do these big events in Liverpool, I'll go back to that one actually. When we, I'll leave you with that. Um, when we do these big events in Liverpool, that is what's amazing. You know, the whole city, we're on the bus, people are talking about it. It's a bit probably when you had the Olympics here. They capture a whole place's imagination. They raise the energy and they kind of raise, raise, raise the emotional, I think, resilience of a place as well. And what do you need? I've got this. You can spot the politicians in this one and spot the artist. I'll leave that with you. Um, you do need strong political support. I've been very, very lucky over the last um, 10 years. I've had a mayor who kind of gets culture, just gets it, you know, allows us to take risks, allows us to do things that most cities don't do, you know, produce big work, support our cultural sector. We haven't cut our cultural sector at all, you know, even through the kind of austerity measures that we've gone through. Um, 
and you need that political support, you, you, you do. So if you're going on this journey, your politicians, you know, those of you in the room, have got to be behind it. And then taking risks, you know, putting on Royal Deluxe or putting on Three Queens is not, are not easy things to do, but the big risky projects are sometimes the ones that people are worried about, but actually they're the ones that give you the most impact and take things to a completely different level. So I'm going to whiz through because I know I'm running out of time. Um, and most importantly, whether it's, you know, working in a church hall or working in your streets or working in your bus stations or doing something incredible on an international stage, it has got to be quality. You know, you cannot, you, you've got to think about actually what that quality is. And that quality will be different, but people understand the difference. You know, we can't do things in Liverpool now that we would have done 10 years ago because people say, well, that's a bit rubbish, isn't it? <laughs> very, very often they say that because um, it's not a city that doesn't like to talk. So, um, an investment, you know, you have got to, I mean, I know, I know there's, there's a budget coming from the mayor's office, but as councils, you've got to commit budget to this. You know, you have got to make sure that you are committed to it yourselves as well because the end games the end game is really is, is is really worth it and that's kind of how i want to end it's fine doing this you will all have ideas lots of them will be very similar but what i would say to any of you is it's got to be about the story of a place you know i live in a city that's got a very very big personality you know it's got a story around every corner all your places will have those stories and when you were doing your bid there is no point doing a capital of culture if you're doing it solely for economic, for regeneration, for all those words, reasons. You've got to want to tell the story of where you are. It's really important. It's important to the people that you, that you, that, that you live with, but it's also important to how that, sit, that place will be seen as you're moving forward. And I'm just going to end now with this. We have a very... <laughs> we did have a very love-hate relationship with the Beatles. Um, you know, it's something that obviously, you know, opens doors internationally. But as a city, you kind of want to move on from that as well. So I was the person who said, let's not put Ringo Starr on the roof of St. George's Hall. That's a really rubbish idea. And, you know, we need to be talking about the new. And then the CNN trucks rolled up, you know, and you realise that's very naive. The CNN trucks rolled in and we were broadcast around the world. We've just taken the kind of whole Beatles legacy of Sgt. Peppers. We've matched international artists with local arts organisations in a place to create a whole new story about that album. And that is kind of, for me, the pinnacle of what you can do with a, Europe, with, a, with, a, with a capital of culture, city of culture, European capital of culture, or borough of culture program. You can take your identity, turn it round corners, and open it up for a whole new generation. Thank you. Let me give you a nice picture. <laughs>